how, how can we be sensitive? Uh, that is a very difficult question. Uh, the, the reality is, is that mental health is still stigmatized. Um, I, I've oftentimes joked with my patients saying that I, I wish this was Southern California and it was simply chic to have a shrink or, or to have a counselor or a therapist. Um, and that isn't always the case. Uh, but but to, to know and understand that mental health is pretty universal and everybody does have their problems. So I think in many ways it is somewhat easy to at least understand and be sensitive um, uh, to others' needs when it comes to mental health. Um, I think another really important factor is just not to be uncomfortable. Um, suicide, you know, you, you've mentioned a number of times that this is an uncomfortable subject. Um, although that may in fact be the case, uh, the reality of it is, is, is that people are uncomfortable but talking about it doesn't actually make it more likely. Mm. Um, that is something that people fear a, Thank a lot. Thank you for is, pointing geez, that out. If, if I talk to someone or if I ask them about suicide, I ask every single patient pretty much every single day, have you thought about hurting yourself? That's not going to put an idea in their head that they hadn't thought of before. So just don't be afraid to talk about it. It, it, it may be uncomfortable, but it's not going to change anything. Good. For the worst, that is. Yeah. And one, one of the things in the research and it's associated with that is, and it really sticks with me, is when, when folks are contemplating suicide, they're really, most of them are conflicted up until the very end when they make that decision. And, you know, what, what we're finding, especially with people who has, have survived attempts, is that they really don't want to die. That what they really want is to have an escape from the pain that they're feeling. So when we're talking with them, that's what we want to do. We want to engage with them. We want them to know that they're not in this alone. We want to get them to a mental health professional and a physician that, that, that can help with the, the, the depression. And uh, because you know, a couple of the biggest predictors of then making an attempt are feeling like they're a burden, feeling like that, uh, that their family would be, or family and friends would be better off without them, and feeling lonely. So don't be afraid to ask the questions, connect, understand that this is more about the pain that they're feeling, their level of stress has overwhelmed their coping mechanisms, and, and not really wanting to die. From the pastoral perspective, that's why I say, you know, we, we say it's selfish, but when people are sick, mentally mentally ill, then they are struggling. So it is not a selfish act. They are reaching out and, and trying to cope in the only way that they know how. And unless you've been clinically depressed, you don't understand that. So that is why I, I really, I get, my hair stands up a little when people say, well, that's the most selfish thing they could have done. We feel that way because we are devastated. But at that time, they do not see a way out. And they do think that the world, their family, their loved ones, they think people are better off without them. So please, you know, I'm not advocating it at all, but understand that that is what people feel when they find themselves in that place.